The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Hey everybody, this is The Ash Holes. Each week, they smoke a different cigar, sometimes the same cigar, but mostly different, and they give their honest impression. They always assign an official Ash Holes rating to that cigar. So, pull up a chair, light up, relax, be an Ash Hole too. It's very rewarding. <coughs> and welcome back to The Assholes, broadcasting live from the Jose Dominguez Cigar Studio. I'm Aaron. I'm joined once again with Matt and Ed. And we're joined with our special guest, John Fozzi from Christoph Cigars. Thank you. Glad to be here. Welcome, John. I think this is your first time on The Assholes, isn't it? It is. It is. I've done a few visits with the Authority on, on Saturday mornings, mm-hmm. but it's uh, my first time here with you guys. Great. Glad to have you. Yeah, really excited to have you here today. Should be fun. Uh, do you want to tell us what we're smoking? Yeah. So we are smoking the Christoph Shade Grown today. Uh, this was a, I don't like to use the word repackaging or any re-release of that. Again, uh, yeah. Kind of a, yeah, I guess re-release is a, a good way to look at it. Uh, it was a little tweak to our Britannia series, mm-hmm. uh, bringing it into the fold with all of the rest of the Christoph product and the family of product. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we're pretty transparent. You know, at the end of the day, it's it's Christoph Connecticut, it's Christoph Sumatra. Um, so it came Straight time forward. to yeah. put it on the table for what it was. And uh, so it's it's Christoph Shade Grown now. It's a Honduran Shade Grown wrapper. Okay. And uh, very tasty. One of the things I noticed about this wrapper right away is um, it has a little bit of a sweetness to it. Yeah. At mm-hmm. least, yeah. And, and, and that's one of the things I love about this cigar. Uh, I've smoked a lot of these. I've bought a lot of these. Uh, it's probably my favorite of the whole Christoph collection. I, I find myself smoking more and more of them as of late. Yeah. Um, I've always, from my days in retail when I worked, uh, I was always that full-bodied smoker. Mm. You know, tended to, to lean into that, that fuller-bodied product. Uh, but I think like most guys do, you, you palate kind of, you regress for a little while before you step back up again. And, and, you, and you make that, yeah. right, you make <laughs> yeah. that whole transition constantly, right? Um, and right now I'm just in that mode where I'm I'm smoking lighter. I'm smoking the shade grow and I'm, I'm smoking a little bit of the Connecticut, uh, some Cameroon in the mix there with that, uh, which isn't to say that I'm still not dipping into the San Andreas mm-hmm. and the Vengeance and, and all of that as well. Yeah, but, stra- uh, strangely enough for me in Christoph, I go for the Connecticut. Yeah. I love that Corona. Co- Christoph Connecticut. That's, that's a good the, one. And the Corona yeah. size yeah. to me it's is, is a home run. Yeah. Yeah. That's a home yeah. run. Yeah. Just when it, that first came out, I was very Well, impressed. it's yeah. a Connecticut with a ton of flavor. Yeah. 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 It's, and it's it, to me, it's that Nicaraguan binder that's under yeah. it, you know, because it's a quad blend Dominican fill on that. So it's still designed to be that nice, light, even-tempered smoke. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that Nicaraguan binder brings just enough to it that it's – it lets you know there's something there. It's yeah. not uh, – I, I feel that having smoked for far longer than I should probably admit to, <laughs> um, there's a lot of Connecticut that's out there that is well constructed, well made, but it lacks that flavor punch to me, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. And I, I think that our Connecticut's got that little bite; it's it just enough to hold the attention and let you know there's something there. Yeah, I always think of that one as my eggnog <laughs> cigar because it's, yeah. it's got that creaminess and it's got all those different spices that it always reminds me of eggnog. You know, it's not an exact flavor, obviously, right? But it, it puts me in that mindset. I right? understand the concept. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. yeah, it's 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 a fair concept to have. I I enjoy Connecticut, uh, and like you said, I like the Corona before the show. I was actually smoking a Christoph um, Habano uh, Corona and just loving it. So, I mean, I'm a huge Christoph fan myself. I, I smoke a lot of those cigars. Um, so I was really excited to, to see you today and to, and to do this cigar. It's been on my list for a while. And, uh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, it's one of my favorites. And this has that uh, unfinished foot. And so mm. you get that first glass. And usually, you know, I toast ahead of time just because I, OCD. And, you know, when, if, if yeah. you, when you're just going straight to light with an unfinished foot, you tend to have to touch up a little bit just to get everything even but i went you know went for it anyways uh this time and you really get just that wrapper flavor mm. and it's very creamy yes like it's surprisingly creamy with just wrapper yeah and unfortunately i do see people who buy them with the, uh, the unfinished foot and they cut it off and light it and i'm like yeah, it's like you're doing yourself such a I disservice it. you know it's, but sometimes yeah. you really want to try it yeah yeah it, you, you, i will say though is as evident by all the little markings all over most of the shirts I owned. It's the tough part of the unfinished foot, yes. too, though. Is, uh, <laughs> it drops off. I, I think I have more ash burns in, in, in 95% of my clothing, mm-hmm. you know. So yeah. I, I know what's a work outfit and what's not, so. <laughs> no, 
know, John, I was pressing buttons and stuff, so forgive me if you've already said. Did you say what variety of tobacco the leaf is, or are we just saying shade grown? Uh, it's actually, it's Honduran grown. Okay. It, it's Honduran grown. Um, you know, most, most people's perception of shade grown comes back to those cheesecloths over the mm-hmm. fields yep. when you drive through South right. Windsor and Connecticut and whatnot. Um, my understanding is that this segment of, of Honduras, uh, where this tobacco is grown, tends to be a lot of natural cloud cover, mm-hmm. you know, so it's a natural like, shade. It's like cover. the Ecuador thing. Yes, mm-hmm. right, exactly. So like the England of uh, <laughs> yeah, South America. Pretty, pretty much. <laughs> so it's uh, more of a natural shade grown than, than that man-made Beautiful. creation. Nice. One of the other things about the cigar that I notice, which is a common theme amongst uh, Christoph cigars as well, is that this is the Robusto size, right. yet it's it almost feels more like a Toro to me. <laughs> it is. It's, yeah, it's yeah. a 54, five and a half, you know, so we're, we're that uh, Robusto, Gordo, short Toro, kind of somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Uh, as far as that size go, there are a couple of lines that we do the traditional 550 mm-hmm. on. Yeah. Uh, but as a, as a whole, our portfolio is the Robusto is a 54, five and a half. Which I am a Robusto guy myself, but a Toro is one of my more favorite sizes. And I think that's another thing about Kristoff is that, you know, if I do go for the, the smaller right. size, it, it's it's still kind of right up my alley. Mm-hmm. I don't feel like I'm one of those guys who's hardcore on the smaller. Right. And I'm like, well, but they don't have it. Like, yeah. I like it. <laughs> it's like, so, get over it. Come yeah. On. Uh, and I, and again, it's just one of those things that's another good selling point for me. Yeah. Well, see, I, I finally gave up being an old school guy. I expect a Robusto to be 5x50. Five right. a, a Corona is yep. supposed to be 40. To, uh, all bets are off. It just it's, gives you a general idea. It, you know, listen, at, at this stage of the market, I think that it, we all try and – as Jared's notorious for saying, our VP, <laughs> you know, we all put dead t- dead plants in a tube, right? Nobody's <laughs> yeah. nobody's reinventing the wheel with what we do in this industry, mm-hmm. right? Right. So it, at the end of the day, any little thing that you can do to differentiate yourself and kind of uh, draw yeah. attention or catch somebody's eye is is, uh, is a positive thing, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. See, and, I, I've been going through that because I'm doing the cigar journal, right. blind mm-hmm. tape, and they want. They put a number on the cigars, but they want a description of the cigar just to make sure it all matches up. And you look at it, and you can't decide what to call it. Like today, right. I had one and said, "Well, this is actually a bellicoso, except it's about an inch and a half too long." <laughs> <Right>. But <laughs> the head of it yeah. is a bellicoso. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like really, it's just compared to the rest of their line. If you don't know what line it is, well, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, why don't we do a top five? Yeah, let's do it. Shall we? Let's do it. Aloha. Today's top five is brought to you by Five Five Cigars. Choose from the mild white label, the medium strength red label, or the full bodied and full flavor blue label. Series Five Five has it all. Five Five equals the perfect 10, and that's what you get every time. The only thing better than a Five Five cigar is two of them, so you can share with a friend. And now, here's today's top five list. So for today's top five, I um, I was having a conversation with a friend and was asking me about you know some of the place he travels a lot. I wanted to know about some of the places in the country that you know are some of the bigger cigar areas mm-hmm. of the country. And so I did a quick little research and based on the things that I know, I came up with uh, five areas that I think have some of the strongest presence for cigars. Okay. Uh, number five, I got Ebor City in Florida, which home of J.C. Newman. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that's huge. A lot of history there. Uh, at number four, Atlanta. And I know, um, speaking with John, especially, we were talking about this before. Uh, there's a lot of shops down there. The, an enormous amount. Uh, yeah. There's probably, from from everything I've heard from the reps that cover that area and, and friends who live down there, there's, if there's not 100 shops in Atlanta, there's not one. Hmm, and it's yeah. growing too. It's, yeah. 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 yeah so keep hearing more and more. A lot of business there. down there. A lot of, you know, a lot of cigar smokers. A lot of, you know. Well, I know, uh, is it uh, Rocky Patel's? Burn just opened yeah. Atlanta, oh, yeah. mm. and, and almost simultaneously, uh, Cam Newton opened his new right. place mm. in Atlanta as well. Oh, yeah. So that it's clearly stuff's happening there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah busy area. Uh, number three, I have Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. That one, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of smoking going on over there, but it's also the home to some of the biggest trade shows in the cigar industry. Yep. Yeah. You know, TPE, uh, the IPCPR, well, formerly known as IPCPR, PCA, PCA yep. uh, which, you know, Almost everybody goes to it. We'll be there uh, in July. 
uh, I just figured that that's that's a huge place. A lot of people like to smoke, and it's it's at this stage of the game, it's one of the few remaining cities that welcome smokers. Mm. Yeah, you especially know. where you can smoke in the casinos too. Right. So it's it's definitely a smoking friendly town, without a, without a doubt. People are going on vacation. It's like they want to yeah. gamble. You want to have a cigar while you're doing your thing. You know, right? I mean, I traveled to Las Vegas a lot myself. I love going over, especially as a cigar smoker. It's, right. You almost smoke almost every, anywhere. Yeah. Um, and number two, I have Miami. That one is. I, I'm surprised that's number not number one. <laughs> well, I thought like number Miami one. is like you think it's like everybody's Cuban there pretty much. True. <laughs> you know? and, uh, and number one, I and I picked for a reason. But number, but uh, Miami, I mean, you know, it's kind of self-explanatory. Everyone's all the, down all there. All the big boys are there. There's uh, there's a lot of a lot of activity yeah. there. A lot of small a lot of small mom and pops that are rolling their own. A uh, lot of lot of great little factories doing production out of that you marketplace. Like, yeah, where are the brand owners living? <laughs> it's like yeah, yeah. pretty much right. Miami. Like that's yeah. you're gonna find them all there. Yeah, I mean, that, I would say that's definitely one of the biggest hubs. But for number one, and for good reason, uh, at number one, I have the state of New Hampshire, and the reason for that is because New Hampshire. Obviously, they have the best podcast. <laughs> well, yes, we have the best podcast. Um, you know, we have. Obviously, right off the bat, we have no tax on cigars here. Yeah, that's huge. Uh, that's yeah. huge. Uh, a lot of people fight for cigars up here. Obviously, we have David Garofalo up here, and yep. some of the other people around uh, who fight for cigars. And you know, we have Two Guys Smoke Shop, which is, you know, well known without a doubt. Without a doubt, and it's a powerhouse yeah. of a cigar shop. And so I figured, you know, number one, I put it up top uh, because of that reason. I just feel like this is one of those areas that, uh, you know, it for the especially for the consumer. Um, is, I mean, is a great is a great place to New shop. Hampshire, New Hampshire is great. I mean, it's it's great for the tax reasons, but it's also it's tough because you know winters. There's it's weather dictated. It's very yeah. re- weather dictated. You know, yeah. places like Texas we were talking about before the show, right? Texas, Texas and Florida, you know, they can smoke year round. And, and Texas, sure. Texas is another one of those states that could easily crack that top five yeah. without a doubt. Mm. It, it's got a tremendous amount of shops down there. Uh, they're tax friendly as well. And Arizona has been growing. Yeah, Arizona fast. too, yeah, yeah. huge. Yeah, yes. a lot of really good shops there. You know, it. Uh, the unfortunate part is when you look at uh, those markets, they all pretty much have one major thing in common: warm weather. Yeah, yeah. My, yeah you know, I minus know. clearly minus New Hampshire. You know, it. Uh, you know, and, and uh, understandably so. When you can smoke year round, it's a it's, it's a different yeah. marketplace, yeah. right? It's it changes well, the game. It's interesting because Dave and I were down in Florida at a podcast Mm. convention and we thought, okay, we need some small cigars to smoke in between the podcast set. So we went over to Corona Mm -hmm. and had a look around and guess what? They hardly sell small cigars, you know, so from market to market, what you see people (laughs) selling and carrying. Dog walkers aren't really a thing because you don't have to hurry. They're not a thing. And, you know, when we were asking Jeff about it later, he said, yeah, nobody buys small cigars. But when it gets cold. uh, (laughs) Well, (laughs) what's cold in Florida? 50? Right. Yeah. But, you know, up here, you probably, if you looked at it, see a big uptick in the smaller sizes during the winter months. Yeah, Mm -hmm. sure. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Yeah, my best friend lives in Sebring, Florida, and uh, he uh, I got him into cigar smoking. He smokes a lot of cigars now, and yeah, I was talking to him over the weekend, and you know, it was cold up here. Was, we're in the 20s, and uh, I was on the phone with him, with my dad, and he was like, yeah, how is it down there? He's like, oh, it's a brisk 77 degrees. Yeah. I got my tank huh. top on, and I'm just shut like, up. shut <laughs> up, yeah. shut yeah. up. Just what you want to hear. Uh, coming from a kid who grew up in Lynn, Massachusetts. Oh, so he knows. He's lived in Florida for just over a year, and he's he like, oh, he yeah, doing. it's great down here. And I'm like, don't yeah. forget where you came from. <laughs> <laughs> Come back and suffer with us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> how quickly they all forget. Yeah. Uh, so getting a lot of creaminess off of this still, mm. you know, clearly it must be from the wrapper, uh, among other things, uh, and some nice spice that's really going along well with it and, uh, kind of a, uh, foundation of nuttiness. Yeah. I definitely get a little bit of nuttiness. Uh, right now I'm getting not really like a, well, kind of a pepperiness, maybe like a cinnamon, Mm-hmm. That little bit of a that, that sharper spice, Stop. I'm getting kind of that. Which, yeah, like raw cinnamon. Yeah, yeah, which really pairs well with the creaminess. Yep. For my taste, I think that's a that's a great blend of flavor right there. Uh, so it's right up my alley in terms of uh, you know the, the total complexity that it has. Well, I find I find on the retro hell, I get a little bit of hay in the background. Hmm. Hey, why not? Hey, hey. hey. 
I'm actually, that's it. actually a good point. I'm not really a retro hailer. I don't know if you guys retro hail a lot. Yeah, every um, few buffs, yeah. So I've been trying to get into it. You know, I was talking to Dave about this recently and right. kind of doing some retro hailing. So um, it, it's interesting because you could make the argument that the large percentage of the smokers don't, don't retro yeah. hail. So if you're reviewing a cigar for taste and flavors, Maybe you're fine not retrohaling because mm -hmm. the largest right. percentage are going to align with what you're tasting. Mm. Right. And, and I've, I've said that for you. Like I said, coming out of retail myself in the past, it, it, most guys come in and, and they know what they like, right? Yeah. They, mm -hmm. they know what they're interested in. They have a specific segment that, they're, that they smoke, right? Whether it's Connecticut, whether they say they like something fuller bodied, you know where you're going to steer your consumer at the end of the mm -hmm. day. Um, but when it comes to that – all the magazines out there that, you know, they get into all the flavor <laughs> profiles and everything else. Yeah. And your average consumer walks in, and and this is by no means a slight to the average consumer. Listen, we all smoke because we enjoy smoking, yep. right? Yep. But nine out of ten guys don't retrohale. No. So all of those little nuances that these magazines are telling you you should taste, yeah. they're never going to find your taste, I'm right? I'm always – very careful to say on the retro hail, right. I detect yes. this, right? Because it's, it's different. different. Yeah, almost always different. Um, yeah, the key is don't try to be a hero, you know? You don't have to exhale the entire mouthful of smoke through right. your nose because then it's going to burn out, and you might not even get as many nuanced flavors that way. Just close your mouth a little bit early when you're exhaling and to let the rest go through your nose. It's just that tail end, and you'll get all those flavors you need. I mean, the best advice I can give you is don't go to Mr. Jonathan. No, he's terrible. <laughs> to teach you how to retrohale. <laughs> Luckily, yeah, that, I learned how to retrohale from, from Dave. So all right. <laughs> I had a good teacher. <laughs> Although I, he doesn't often retrohale. Yeah, no, yeah. he doesn't. I, I actually, years ago, uh, probably going back about uh, 12 or 13 years ago now, when I first learned to retrohale, uh, it was actually from Jesus Fuego. Oh, yeah. Hmm. He happened to be in Providence and, and visiting one of the stores that I was involved with at the time. And uh, we had that conversation. Hmm. And that was that was my introduction to retrohaling. Yeah. I mean, it's it's when you really figure it out and it's not burning you when you get it right, it's a world of difference. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Why don't we take a break? Um, we'll come back. We? We'll continue smoking the Christoph Shade Ground. Only Great Leaf makes great cigars. Aganorsa Leaf stands out because of the distinctive mouth-watering flavors of the Corojo 99 and the Criollo 98 seeds, cultivated by Cuban agronomists on the best lands in Jalapa and Esteli, Nicaragua. When you smoke one of the JFR, JFR Lunatic, Guardian of the Farm, or Casa Fernandez cigars, you will experience the unique taste and aroma that makes Aganorsa Leaf different than any other tobacco in the world. Smoke one today and enjoy the signature flavor of Aganorsa Leaf. Hello, cigar aficionados. This is Klaus Kellner from Davidoff Cigars. I invite you to taste the elements with Davidoff Escurio, Nicaragua, and Yamasa. From water comes originality. Savor the sweet and spicy originality of the Davidoff Escurio tobaccos born by the rains of Bahia, Brazil. From fire comes intensity. Enjoy the bittersweet aromas and fiery intensity of the Davidoff Nicaragua. From earth comes complexity. Taste the earthy flavors and complex spices that are unique to the red soil of the Yamasa region in Dominican Republic. Only Davidoff Master Blenders could take the power of nature and blend it into a range of exceptional cigars. Each element making each cigar a unique experience. Water, fire, earth. Flavors that have risen from the very world itself. I hope you enjoy them as much as I do. Davidoff Cigars. Cigar adventures to a wider world. Looking for a mild cigar? Don Rafael is just that. Solidly constructed, and it offers up a mellow experience that holds a ton of universal appeal. This is just one of the reasons for Don Rafael's enormous success. Looking to get your friend into smoking cigars? The Don Rafael cigar is absolutely the right choice. The brand originally set out to outdo the competition, but for the price, there is no competition. You can't beat Don Rafael, it outsells them all. 
Don Rafael can be enjoyed any time of the day, all day, and cigar after cigar. The Don Rafael has a smooth, mellow aroma that will not linger. Draped in a seamless golden brown Connecticut wrapper, Dominican long fillers, and a Dominican binder complete the blend. Expect earthy notes with some hints of cedar throughout. And as far as quality everyday blends go, for a mild cigar smoker, it doesn't get more satisfying than this. Remember this, Don. Don Rafael. Aging Room 4 Nicaragua Maestro. Named Cigar Aficionado's number one cigar of the year with a 96 rating, is a complex Nicaraguan puro carefully blended by Rafael Nodal and made by A.J. Fernandez. As Cigar Aficionado described it, every puff is an overture of flavors that's at times heavy and rich with notes of dark chocolate and wood, and other times subtle and understated with hints of fine caramel and toasted almonds. Treat yourself to an aging Room 4 Nicaragua today. Surgeon General work. Tobacco smoke increases the risk of lung cancer and heart disease, even in non-smokers. Bohemian is the original Brazilian big ring gauge cigar with the unfinished foot, curly tailed head and value, value, value. There are a Brazilian reasons to buy and smoke Bohemian and here are just a few. Created in the Cuban tradition, this lush, dark Brazilian Maduro leaf surrounds a five-year-old Sumatra binder with Dominican and Nicaraguan well-aged long filler leaves. So, what you do expect from a Bohemian? A departure from the conventional, a flavorful journey into sweet, nutty, almost caramel finish. Bohemian, the original, unconventional cigar. Take a journey. When was the last time you experienced something for the first time? Curiosity drives discovery. Discover exceptional tobaccos aged to perfection with Balmoral Inejo XO. Born from passionate curiosity, Balmoral invites you to discover the optimal balance of sophisticated complexity and smoothness. Each meticulously crafted, extensively aged Inejo XO cigar blend is the result of a relentlessly global search for the top 5% of select premium tobaccos available, including our exclusive signature Brazilian Mata Norte. Crowned with a sun-grown Brazilian Arapiaca wrapper, Balmoral Inejo XO embraces your palate with complex notes of cedar, cacao, and peppery spices that finish with a smooth, underlying natural sweetness. We invite you to discover and experience Balmoral Inejo XO today. And we're back live at the Jose Dominguez Cigar Studio. We're smoking the Christoph Sun uh, Sungrown. Shade and- Grown. Shade grown, excuse me. Gosh, <laughs> shade grown. <laughs> Losing my mind. Uh, while we'll I have your attention, go over to Instagram and follow us at Ash Holes Radio and follow us on Facebook. That's the easiest one because it's just Ash Holes. Yes. Uh, and John, do you have uh, I, I do. I'm, I'm out there as well. On Instagram, it's Christoph underscore Johnny Vegas. Uh, that's a long-standing nickname <laughs> that, that most people know me by at this point. Uh, under Facebook, it's just under my regular name, John Fozzi. Okay. Uh, and of course, as always, follow Christoph Cigars uh, on Facebook and Instagram as well. Uh, stay up to date with where we'll be and, and where our reps are be nice. put, yeah. doing events countrywide. Always great to go to a, an event, you know. It's, it's it's a different experience. Than just it is. It is. It's it's always good to get out and you know most consumers have questions. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's it's a great time to be able to interact and get to know some guys and build some friendships and and get to know uh, people in different parts of the market. So when you are traveling, it uh, makes it a little more enjoyable. And you mm-hmm. just got back from TPE in Las Vegas. I did. And uh, I did. That was actually uh, didn't know what to expect. This was our. Second year doing the show out there. Okay. Uh, last year, it was just our VP, Jared Trudeau, mm-hmm. and our, our West Coast rep at the time that went. Uh, this year, Jared, our West Coast rep, and myself were there. Uh, the flow of business was good. The flow of the trade show floor was good. Nice. Uh, the fact that there were as many cigar manufacturers there this year versus uh, years past, you know, uh, was excellent. 
Uh, but it was just, it was uh, a much more relaxed show. You hmm. know, uh, July, July to me is organized chaos at the PCA. Yeah, I'd imagine that's. Like you know, it's season. everybody's kind of rushing around. Uh, a lot of retailers come in and want to get in and out mm-hmm. uh, because it, it's peak time of the year. Yep. Uh, nobody wants to spend any more time there than they have to, so everybody's trying to run around and. Uh, you're, you're praying that appointments actually go off on time and mm-hmm. that everybody's showing up to the appointments. And yeah. uh, this yeah, was kind of stressful. <laughs> you know, th- this was much more casual, much more relaxed. Everybody just kind of found their way by when they needed to, and and we did business, and it uh, it was it was it was a lot of fun. Nice, yeah, yeah. good. And as I said before, John and I will obviously will be at uh, PCA in Las yes. Vegas in July. Yes. Um. So, and we're looking forward to that as well because a lot of things going on with that show this year. And so we're without a doubt, <laughs> we'll get to see firsthand a lot of the things that are being shaken up right now. So we yeah. really look forward to that as well. Yeah. It'll, it'll be an interesting dynamic this year. I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see how it all plays out mm. and, and what it brings, but uh, I, I don't expect it to be anything less than it's been in years past as far as uh, business levels and, and foot traffic or any of that. I yeah. think uh, if anything, it, uh, it probably gives some retailers a, a little extra time to spend with some of the the mid tier and the smaller manufacturers and, mm-hmm. and kind of find some of those hidden gems that they've missed out on yeah. uh, mm-hmm. in, in years past because they haven't they have been so pressed for time trying to get around the floor so yeah hopefully it hopefully it bodes well any, yeah yeah uh, anything new coming down the pike any big uh, changes. <laughs> Um, nothing change wise. Uh, as far as Kristoff goes, we will have a new product out, uh, hopefully for the trade show in okay. July. Um, I don't want to say too much about it because yeah, I, I, I don't early, know. You know, we're not going to press. I don't too know. Much. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know how much I can Unless or can't can. say uh, without getting my hand slapped. <laughs> um, I, what I can say is that we've sourced some tobacco from a, an, an area that isn't necessarily historically uh, known for cigar tobacco. Okay. Could mm. be interesting. Uh, so very it, interesting. it should be should be something very unique, something different, uh, and I'm looking forward to hopefully getting some samples in in relatively soon, so I can try it and uh, see what it's all about. Uh, New Jersey Shade Ground, calling it now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll be really exciting. Yeah, it's got a got a tang to it. Now. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, speaking of of kind of new, well, even though it was a one off last year. Two Guys Smoke Shops had the Kristoff Firecracker. Right? Oh, yes. Excellent which was firecracker. amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For those of you who didn't obviously get to try that, it was a pissed off blend. Yeah, I still have about a box and a half of those laying around. I think I have a box <laughs> left myself, and I'm like, do I smoke them? Do I save them? I so. know. <laughs> I know. Uh, so we're really excited about that. And obviously this year, Darren and I have talked about before, uh, Nick Perdomo will be making the Firecracker for us this year. Yes. So we're excited yep. about that. Um I, other than that, yeah, I can't wait to see what you guys got cooking. Yeah, it should be good. It should be good. I, I'm, I'm curious to see, too. Based on what I've heard, it should be good. Nice. Yeah, well, we'll keep you updated as we find out more. Uh, what do we do our Old Front Freddy? Oh, Ooh, whoa. it's time. It's time once again <laughs> to get delighted with Old Fart Freddy, brought to you by Cuban Delight Cigars. This is Old Fat Freddy, and if you know me, you know I was delighted with the good old days, when life was simpler and cheaper. What the hell is it with TV nowadays? It's very complicated. 24 hours a day, hundreds of channels. When I was young, there were just three channels, and they didn't come in so great unless you knew how to use the rabbit ears, and fortunately, I was a pro. I always knew when it was time to go to bed, when they played the national anthem, and it went off. I'm cheap, so I love Cuban Delight Cigars, a perfectly good everyday cigar, handmade in the Dominican Republic, from the pieces left over from the high-end cigars. For a quick buck, I can enjoy a Cuban Delight. Cuban Delight Cigars. Love hearing from Old Fat Freddy. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Rabbit ears, you know. I mean, now we're at a whole other phase of what TV is. Because it's like, it went from, now it's, there's a million chin, now it's a million streaming service, uh, streaming there may be no TV, and, really. Yeah, cable is great. less and less. I mean, yeah. now you just need internet, and you can really watch anything you want. I, I, I got rid of cable years cable ago. Left and right. I yeah. got rid of it years ago for yeah. just that reason. Yeah, I remember when like um, there was people out there, they were advertising for cutting the cable. Yeah. You know? I well, mean, they, were, they were all talking cord cutting, and you saved this much money, but very quickly over time, you spend about the same for, amount of money. That's one. what I'm saying. It's like with all, if you know, unless you have a very specific taste, you're right. going to be spending a lot on the <clears throat> many different services I mean, there are. I think the content is so fragmented. It's like, well, I want to watch this show. I got 13 different things, but it's yeah. on another thing. 
Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a couple of services where I'm like, I don't really want to get it, but I definitely want to see this right. show. So I don't know. Every yeah. now and then, Hulu almost sucks me in, but not yet. <laughs> no, not quite. <laughs> yeah, there's maybe like one or two shows right. that I want to watch, but I'm like, ah, maybe I'll just wait to see if it pops up somewhere else. Yeah, I so. can't lie. Disney Plus sucked me in for the Mandalorian. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what? That, yeah, it, I've watched the Mandalorian and maybe a few other shows, but I haven't really watched much else. Well, the whole Avengers, right. but it's I still think that's worth it because you know it's there and there's new stuff that's definitely coming and yeah but some of the other ones i'm like oh, i'd watch this one show and then cancel but yeah. that's how they suck you in they do all their originals and they're like well you have to have you know hulu because you want to watch this show then amazon's like well we have our show so you got to get us too and then yep. obviously everybody knows netflix is the powerhouse right powerhouse now. although not as much as the powerhouse as it used to be right yeah, it seems but to it have... still has it has just enough to keep me going you know? yeah yeah is that Mandalorian thing some kind of Star Wars nonsense? Some yeah. kind of Star Wars nonsense. Pretty, well, uh, pretty spot on. The only thing that tempted me was uh, that Bill Burr was in that, right? Yes. yes. Mandalorian? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, so I haven't seen Very, the Mandalorian. serious role, so. too. Which is like, usually yeah. he plays more of a comedy, but it was like, I don't think there was anything, anything funny about what he did in that no, episode. I just heard him on the it podcast was, saying, I did not drop Baby Yoda. Yeah, yeah no, I forgot that. <laughs> I mean, the Baby Yoda's fine, but yeah, not but, because it's cute. <laughs> well, listen, people drop children, and usually they're fine. <laughs> yeah, this one's 50 years old, so it's like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's up, you know? <laughs> All right, uh, so this has been progressing really well. Uh, yes. It's still got that creaminess and the spice, and I feel like it's just kind of really become very balanced at the halfway point where it's, you know, nothing's overpowering. It's a, just a very uh, well-balanced cigar. Yeah, I really like this cigar myself. As I said, I smoke it all the time. Um, the uh, The intensity of the spice that I was getting previously in, like, the first half – has tapered down for mm-hmm. me a little bit. It's a little more mellow, and uh, as I and I like both flavor profiles of that. Right. But the second half, I think, is definitely my more favorite section. Mm. It's it's like right in my sweet spot. Yeah, you're cruising along now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it burns really well too. The other thing I, I, I love about this is it, it just it burns perfectly, nice and even all the way down. Uh, great construction. Yeah, I've got a little tail going, but mostly that's from the lighting method I chose. Uh, yeah. But it's it's catching itself up. It's not an issue. It's not going to cause any problems. Yeah. Uh, so it's just the shaggy foot issue, but, <laughs> you know, easily avoided. Yes. No. I um, One of the things that I I got a lot of crap for, I, should, I, I could say, I guess, is when I first started smoking, I used to get made fun of for smoking too fast. Yep. Which uh, number one issue. Which I've been a lot better with. But for some reason today, I just, I'm loving the cigar and I'm kind of going back into my quick smoking uh, you uh, know, habit. And, 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 and for good, bad, or indifferent, depending on what kind of smoke you are, I tend to find that most of our product as a whole smokes long and slow. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it's not a fast burn. It's, it's consistent. It's, it holds the light. And it's, as a guy who's on the road for... God, way too many miles a year. Um, I, the robusto size is what I smoke when I drive. Mm, yeah, and I can I can cover some territory and go through a, a robusto in about an hour and a half. Yeah, I mean it'll it's, it'll, it'll it'll last. I so. started I think ten minutes before we uh, went on the air, and it's yeah, just hitting the halfway point. And it's just a nice firm pack, not overly packed. You know, yep. the draw is perfect. Uh, so construction spot on. We we do something a little unique. To most companies in that, and it's not that we're the only ones that do it, but um, whereas a lot of companies, they do their quality control and the roller does their thing and mm-hmm. and, and QC walks by and pops one out of the, the wheel of cigars yep. and that's what gets tested. Uh, every stick that we put into a box has been draw tested. Okay. That's always good. So yep, it's a couple of companies that do it. Yeah. Um, it's, and it's always appreciated. Yeah. No. And it, it helps with the quality and consistency. Listen, at the end of the day, it, it's, a, it's a handmade product. Yeah. You know, there are going to be some inconsistencies that pop up over the course of time, mm-hmm. uh, but you hope to limit that with with staying on top of the quality. So Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you look at everything that comes out of Cuba, for example, I mean, <laughs> half Oof. the box you buy. Biggest issue is quality. Roll the <laughs> dice. You know, I mean, uh, you take your pick, but I think the biggest thing is half the cigars in that box plugged, and it's... It's disappointing, you know, for some people who are really into that and they finally get Cubans, they get a box and they start smoking. The first one they have, oh, great. They're all excited. They go to the next one, plucked. 
Yeah. yeah. And one after that, plugged. It's, and it's 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 disappointing. I, I have I have friends who who have some Cubans that they've been sitting on for a while and they've been waiting to smoke them and they finally got to them and uh, they tossed him away after like the first awesome. third yeah, because nothing, they were like, nothing, I'm not fighting it. Nothing more disappointing I mean, than that. Some people are gamblers, you know. Some people like it, but you know, yeah. personally, I wanted to be consistent and right. what I expect. Well, that sad story happened to me on Sunday. Oh. It was my last Pargas Serie oh. D in oh. the box, oh. and I thought, oh, oh man, this would be a nice change. Yeah. No, it wasn't. That's it was thing. a change, like, all right. You get your hopes up, and it like lets you down yeah. at the very end. Yeah, you know? and oh. you know, you could get a sense of that kind of honey sweetness you get from the series, but yep. you couldn't get anything. Oh, out of gosh, it. that's right. Yeah. Yeah. It was sad. I, I almost cried, but I didn't. You're a big boy, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I just grabbed a real cigar. <laughs> <laughs> Something you know is quality. One thing I wanted to touch on uh, while we have John here is one of my uh, other favorite cigars from Christoph is the Signature Series. Mm. Um that I know you do. I think it's events only. The JT. Well, we have we have a couple signature series. So so one is normal production, and that's the GC signature for it's Glenn's, yes. Glenn cigar, and that's been in the marketplace now for probably about twelve years, mm -hmm. um, and, and that one is, is, a, is a full production run. Uh, but starting with the trade show last year, we did a release on the JT signature. Jared Trudeau, uh, Jared right? RV, yes. RVP, yep. um, tremendous blend. It came out excellent, uh, but it is just that. It's an event only. Uh, my guess in my conversations with Jared is it'll probably probably only be in about 70 to 80 accounts by mm -hmm. the end of this year nationwide. Uh, fortunately, Jared's a Rhode Island kid. So <laughs> yeah. as a result, New England, we're a little heavier with it, um, <laughs> yeah. which is good Seem for me. a little bit more often. You know, <laughs> good for me because it, uh, it means I have access to them. Uh, but uh, now that blend came out spectacular, a box press uh, Toro, one size only. Uh, that's actually, it's, it started, it's been a, a four pack, a cellophane four pack that's been available currently. I know that boxing has been being worked on. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and it will go into a box to be shipped soon. Uh, I believe from my most recent conversations at TPE with Jared that that's probably going to be a 20 count box okay. instead of a 10. Mm. Uh, but I'm not 100% positive on that. I don't know that. Uh, Still being finalized, maybe. I think yeah. it's been finalized, but I, I <laughs> just the, it just it's <laughs> hasn't been passed down to lost in yet. translation at this point. You <laughs> know? Yeah. Well, I'd be excited to see that either way. It, it's, yeah. it's one of those cigars that when mm. I get my hands on it, it's very exciting. No, I, I, and, the flavor on it, it really came out good. And Jared's not a full-bodied smoker, so mm -hmm. it's it's a, a mild medium smoke with some good spice on it. Uh, a wrapper that we haven't worked with in anything else before. It's an Ecuadorian HVA wrapper. Uh, it brings a lot of flavor, and uh, just the blend came out and it's spectacular. Uh, it was about a two-year process. And it's rolled N2 bar, yep. I believe, right? I yeah. believe so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's that's a that's a. I, those are some of my favorites. You know, they draw. Takes a little those. extra time, but yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's worth it. Fantastic. Time, yeah. yeah. All right. Why don't we go to a rating? Yeah, let's do it. Who wants to go first? Uh, Ed, you haven't gone first in a while. Yeah. No, I'm the mean one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you always seem to go last. I want to see what you're thinking. We're going to end on high note. Let's put you on the hot seat for a second. What oh, you, boy. What do you got? Steaming in this seat. Now you can't wait for us to we're gonna get a real rock Right, score. you can't give me the real answer. Yeah, so let's go. What do you got? <laughs> so I'm in, I'm in my uh, Cigar Journal review mode. So I've just mm -hmm. been smoking this the same way I was smoking the others this morning. Mm -hmm. And the score I came up with is a 91. Okay. Wow. Which for me is a very good That's score. Very good. Uh, yeah. I would say, you know, on average, about... 10% of the ones that yeah. I end up getting score hmm. above a 90. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's yeah. so that says a lot. Yeah. That's a good score from coming so, from Ed. Uh, I'm actually at 92, so just to right. be a little bit. Um, we're think, often one off. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're usually pretty close. <laughs> um, the creaminess, the spice, everything working together, the construction, everything's really working well. Uh, Strength-wise, eh, maybe like a five. You know, mm -hmm. not, There's a few moments where I thought it may be a six. Uh, but I think it's it's settled to a five, so nice, you know, medium, middle of the road, uh, but with great flavor. So it's a 92 for me. Uh, I'm going to go with 92 as well. Okay. Um, as I said, this is one of my favorite cigars, and it burns well, has a great flavor profile, very complex. Um, I love the wrapper on it. I think it's I think it's fantastic. Um, you know, I, I can't say enough about it. I mean, I, I love this cigar. Yeah, it's a definitely a must-try. Yeah. 
as uh, as the biased one on the panel today. <laughs> um, I, I tend to I tend to lean with Ed. To me, it's it's about a 91, hmm. 92. I, hmm. I'm right there with both you guys on that. Um, as a guy who tends to smoke fuller body, it, it's rare for me to step back into that mild mode. Like mm-hmm. I said, I, I find myself more and more lately that I have been. Um, it, but it uh, it definitely hits that 91, 92 mark for me. Yeah. I mean, you heard it from the rep yourself. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's official. It's official. <laughs> All right. You've been listening to The Assholes, broadcasting from the Jose Dominguez Cigar Studio. Head over to unitedpodcastnetwork.tv. Check out our past episodes. You can share them. You can torment your friends with them. And you can also see some other great podcasts that are higher quality than ours now. <laughs> All right. We will uh, see you next week. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.